immortal, invisible God, paid for one. You are my key, invisible God, great and mighty one. There is none like you. For you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Forever you are the same. There is none like you you are God say you are God all by yourself you are God all by yourself you are God all by yourself forever you are the same You may have your seat. Thank you. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith requires us to speak them before we see or feel them. You have to begin by believing, confessing, and acting on God's word. So then you can bring Jesus on the scene by believing. This is what our faith requires. Believing, confessing, and acting on what? On God's word. You can bring Jesus on the scene. Instantly, you can bring him on the scene. May you are not alone on the seat. That you are sitting, looking, to many, you are not talking, but your faith is talking. Your faith is talking. I want to hear what your faith is saying. Because the words you speak determine the life you enjoy. The words that is going on in your heart determine the life you enjoy. Tell your neighbor. No, I don't know what you are saying. You, you are sitting quietly, but your faith is talking. I'm saying what is going on in your heart determines the life you are enjoying. Tell your neighbor. That is the way you speak. Determine the life you are enjoying. Mm -hmm. They say, I'm sitting down, I'm not talking. Who told you you are not talking? Something is going on. He said, ah, look at this man. What does he say? Hmm, a lot is going on in your heart. Determine the life you enjoy. Next. The words a man speaks create the blessings or curse in his way. The reason is that your mouth is a reviler of the belief in your heart. Your mouth, a reviler. Believe in your heart. What is going on in your heart? Something is going on. You are saying something. You know you have no control. If I'm not talking, my faith is talking. Tell your neighbor. If I'm not moving, my faith is moving. 
if I'm not looking, my faith is looking. Just close your eyes and say, I'm not looking, I'm not look- I can't say anything. Your faith is looking. You say you are sleeping. Your faith is alive. That is why if anyone come to you in the dream, hey, 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 listen, oh, 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 it's, it's, it's a dream, dream, dream. I'm not talking, I'm not going to talk. Your faith is talking. I'm not praying. I'm not going to pray, I'm not praying, I'm not praying. Uh, I don't believe, I'm not going to pray. Who told you you are not praying? How will you live next? So I'm not going to pray. Say your brother doesn't pray. Who told you your brother doesn't pray? It's hard to say something. If you want to know what a man had to say, the next life will tell you. Not now, next will tell you. When a man suddenly fall on the floor. Before that falling, there was a thought that was going on in the heart. I, I hope I will not fall. I, I will fall. I will not fall. I, I, I feel dizzy. But before you know it, you find yourself on the floor. Sometimes, for you to know that uh, it's not possible for you not to talk. If you are not talking, your feet is talking. Sometimes you just be sitting down. Something will be telling you, ah, not my brother, Kenneth is coming. We'll be coming now, now. We'll come today. Before you know, you just see Brother Kenneth. It's only you that will say, ah, this is what is going on in my heart. If it is evil to evil, you just sit down and say, ah, this vehicle seems we we'll have accident. The only you, nobody knows you are talking that. But before you know it, accident, you say, ah, this is what was going on in my heart. Say, if I'm not talking, my faith is talking. If I'm not praying, my faith is praying. What kind of faith? Is it faith in faith or faith in the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ? That will determine life you enjoy. If I'm not talking, my faith is talking. That's why sometimes when I want to start praying now, because I want you to hear what I'm going to say, I say, in Jesus' name, because I want you to hear me. But after that, in Jesus' name, every other, you only see me stretching my hand. And they get here. Some in the past, they say, this man doesn't mention the name Jesus. Ah, he will not call the name Jesus. We don't know what he's calling. Okay, Pharisees and Sadducees. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. By the time I do that, of 10 people, I will get tired. I have employed flesh in calling the name Jesus. We employ much flesh to the things of the Spirit. Once you light a candle, it lights it. Just place it. So you cannot light a candle and light it again 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 and light it again. No, but it says it's not quenched, it's not off. You just light a candle, that is the name of Jesus. But if it's not light, you continue to light it, continue to light, continue to light, continue to light. Once you want to pray for four people here, and you face a sister and say, in the name of Jesus, and you know Jesus hear you, he will continue to follow you to do the rest. It is when you know Jesus. Mm. It is when you know Jesus does not hear what you are saying. You say in Jesus' name, be here. In Jesus' name, be here. Because you don't believe Jesus has heard you. Our mouth is a reviler of the belief in our heart. There is power in our mouth. But the belief in our heart is released my faith. The belief in our heart is released by who? Faith. And faith requires us to speak before we feel or see it. It requires us to speak faith before we feel or see it. 
The words we speak determine the life we enjoy. What life are you enjoying? So this is the reason where we say, in Jesus' name, and another man say, in Jesus' name, we see different results. Some I do, some meaningless, some oftentimes destructive. Some will say, in Jesus' name, the result, meaningless. Other will say, in Jesus' name, the outcome, I do. And other people will say, in Jesus' name, oftentimes, destructive. So what is the cause of this? If the words you speak in prayer, in preaching, in teaching, are not according to the word of God, are not according to the spirit of God, they oftentimes remain idle, meaningless, and destructive. If they are not according to the word of God, if they are not according to the spirit of God, they remain idle, meaningless, often time, many times, destructive. You just say, when you want to sleep, you say, in Jesus' name, I pray, I pray, Lord, I pray, Lord, I pray, Lord. You now open the Bible, pray, pray, pray. In that night, the demon will now come and wake you up and start to even carry the Bible, you place on the bed and hit it on you. What are you saying? What are you saying? By the time you wake up, you say, ah, I pray, I call the name Jesus, and I open the Bible, and this is a serious nightmare. Why demon is still fighting me? Because your prayer are not according to the word of God, according to the spirit of God. And the Bible says the spirit will be released to the degree we stand in reverence of his word. Tell your neighbor, the spirit will be released to the degree we stand in reverence of his word. I can't hear you. To the degree we stand in honor of his word, the spirit will be released. Again, the spirit will be released. To the degree we stand in honor of his word. So if you now stand to say, Jesus, 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 help me, Jesus, in Jesus' name. And this language, there are language of today and the language of the Bible. If what we are saying are not language of the Bible, I mean, are not according to God's word, are not according to the spirit of God, they will remain idle, what you say. What you say will remain meaningless or oftentimes destructive. You will invite demon. That will invite demon to come and attack you. Because anywhere demon hear the name of Jesus, they want to peep. They, they will just look, who is calling Jesus? Who is calling Jesus? And if they know there is no authority, and you are not calling the name Jesus according to his spirit, according to God's way, they will jump on you. This is what happened to seven sons of Sceva. They say, Jesus we know. God of Paul we know. Who are you? Because they realize that the name Jesus they are calling was not according to his spirit, was not according to his way. You so, saw, oh, they attacked them. Many of us have been attacked if the name is not according to his way or according to his spirit, you'll be attacked. You'll be strong. I, I call the name Jesus. I believe in Jesus, but not according to his spirit, not according to his way. That's what we call language of today and language of the Bible. 
the spirit will be released to the degree we stand in honor of his word. That is God's word. So you can see now the reason why you have to be genuine. You have to be properly born again. So there are many claim to be Christian all over the world. You see them, you, you keep asking yourself, what is wrong? No, 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 no. If your Christian is not according to his word, according to his spirit, my brother, your life will remain meaningless. I do. And many times, attack. That name, Jesus, when you call it, whoever called that name, whether you have the right to call the name according to spirit or according to his word, you don't have any right to call it. You are just calling the name because of that called the name. Satan always, hey, who? Ah, ah, this, this is, who is the person? And want to know by what authority, by what authority mean, are you calling the name according to his word? Who gave you the right to call the name? Me, are you calling the name according to his spirit? We can now see where our problem coming from. Our problem coming from, we are not Christian according to his way. We are not Christian according to his spirit. You can only be a Christian according to his spirit. You must be led. That is what I mean. You must be led. He said, no one can say Jesus is Lord. He said, by what? By the Spirit. Me, you must be led to be one. You must be led to be a Christian. He said, no one can say Jesus is Lord except he is led, except he is helped, except he is guarded by the Spirit. So this is why there is a, a fashion all over. We have religious, we have Christian. That's a different. Christian religion. That's a different. The difference is just that as a Christian, you must be led by the Spirit. You can start now. And how do we start this? Yes, begin to meditate over the message, not think about the message. Thinking is different from meditation. You can only think about your challenges, your problem, your debt. But when you talk of meditation, you talk of your heart. You mean devotion. If not, many of us will get there before we know we are not a Christian. And I don't want you to get there before you know you are not a Christian. With what we are seeing in the world today, it's so difficult to actually know who is Christian. It's so difficult. Because ceremonial is so everything, the church has been taken over by ceremony. Has been taken over by ceremony. You'll be very sure. It's so difficult. It's only the Spirit of God can tell you this is Christian, this is religious man. You, you don't know. It's so difficult. So I don't want you to get there before you know you are not a Christian. Everywhere ceremony, according to the slabbers, according to the turns table, according to the program, that is not Christian. Church of the Holy Spirit should be ness, not now. That is, whatever we are doing in the church of Holy Spirit should be ness, not now. But today, now is the church. We know what we want to do. We know what we want to read. We will know what we want to sing. We know how to wash in. Everything is a slab word, as it should be, conventional. The Spirit inspires us from time to time, from moment to moment, tell us next. Sometimes we get loose. We get disconnected. We don't know what to do next. So that will attest to our fitness. If you are fit, if you are not fit, you can know. But how will you know you are fit when what you want to do is already in the paper, it's program, you need just to read it. You can't you know whether you are fit. I take you back again. The Spirit of God will be released 
to the degree you stand in reverence, I mean in honor of his word. How do we honor his word? How? How do we honor his word? The word of God must be integral. That is part of you. He stay here, let her go there. It must be in your heart by meditation. By meditation, your heart can act upon the world. Act means your spirit. That is your spirit act upon the world by meditation. And when your spirit act upon the world, it begins to influence your character and your behaviors. That I don't want to smoke. You can only stop that smoking when the wear act upon your spirit, it will stop you. But if the wear has not yet act upon your spirit, and you say you want to stop smoking, you will stop it a while. After some time, you start in a big way. By meditation, our art act upon the wear. That is, your spirit act upon the word. That is John, immersed. And when that happens, it begin to influence your conduct, your character. What you say, ah, I cannot stop smoking. You just find that smoking stopped. Because that's where, as, I mean, act upon your, your spirit. So sometimes you say, oh, no, I don't know, I've been trying to stop you. I'm a, a child of God, I've been coming to church. They have prayed for me. The prayer will not do that. They have prayed for me to build your character. Prayer cannot do anything if the prayer is not offered according to his spirit, according to his word. So please, let us be genuine. Okay? Because sometimes you just begin to continue to fake yourself. And you will not even know. You will not even know. That is why I don't want us to get there before we know. It will be too late to get there before we know. Ignorance is not an excuse. Ignorance is not an excuse. We have so much wisdom, so much knowledge about the Bible. But that knowledge seems not according to his spirit, not according to his word. You will preach it, you will teach it, very, very good teacher, when you are given a mind to preach it. People say, hey, hey, that is a good preacher. It may be a good preacher, but not according to his spirit. Tell your neighbor, you may be a good preacher. A very, very good preacher not according to his spirit. That is, the presence of God is the spirit. The presence of God in what we are saying is that spirit. You can talk without the presence of God. Hey, Jesus, people say, oh my God, it's a good pressure. Not according to his spirit. So now, I want to leave you here. The way out, meditation. When we say meditation, take more of me, O oh Lord Jesus. Give me more of you, O oh Lord Jesus. And when you are saying this, even your body will not move. Nobody will know what you are saying. Take more of me. Give me more of you. More of your forbidden. More of your kindness. More of your purity, more of your purity, more of your faithfulness, more of your holiness. Take more of me, Lord, and give me more of you. This is what you should engage your heart. If you are not engaging your heart, your heart will engage itself. Engaging your heart, begin to pray at the same time as you hear me, what this man is saying, give me the grace to do it. Grace to practice in it. Grace to practice in it. Grace to do it. Take more of me, Lord. Give me a hearing heart. A hearing heart. A hearing heart. This is what you should engage on. If you are not engaged your heart, your heart will engage itself. 
So you have to engage your heart in sowing spirit. Give me a hearing heart, Lord. Give me a hearing heart, Lord. This is it. So, when you are now saying this, automatically your heart would act upon the word I'm speaking to you. The heart doesn't just act upon the word without the grace. While you are saying that, your heart will now act upon the word. And when the heart now act upon the word, you suddenly find your character and your behavior changing. What you feel, you cannot stop. You will start stopping them. Take more of me, give me more of you. Give me a hearing heart. So you create habits. For you to be great in the Lord, you must have habit, mean a time for yourself, a time for yourself. This time to meditate on the word of God. So you talk of prayer, prayer, prayer. Prayer cannot work without your spirit joining himself to God's word. Tell your neighbor, no prayer without your heart. Act upon the word. So because this is what we are taught today. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. It's master key. When your heart act upon the word, it becomes prayer in self. It becomes prayer in self. Look at what I said. I said to you that the way you speak determines the life you enjoy. If the heart up upon the word. So take note of that. My heart must act upon the word. This is what I mean by the spirit will be relieved to the degree we stand in reverence of his word. 